Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm not even gonna bother with a typical intro of mine. I'm just gonna jump right into my favorites because that's what we're all here for. So the first thing I wanna mention, it's not even just one product, but it's an entire line. It's the Westman Atelier makeup line. And it's something that I purchased towards the end of July and I used it for an entire week alone when I traveled up to Portland, Maine. And I think I had talked about it when I discussed the makeup. Yes, I did. So when I reviewed the entire makeup line, I talked about how I used it in a much more uh, warm and humid climate versus here in Vegas. And in both climates, all the products worked very, very similarly. I thought they had a very nice longevity. I thought that they wore really well. I don't feel like they faded. Because a lot of the products are like stick products, I was really worried in a human climate that like the, the stick uh, formula or the consistency of stick products would kind of add to the humidity on my skin in a way, and they didn't. They just wore really, really beautifully. And I like that Gucci Westman, who's the creator of this line, um, is not only an amazing makeup artist, but she wanted to really incorporate like very high quality ingredients and sort of mesh like the idea of skincare and makeup together. And while I love every single um, item in that line, I'm just gonna shout out a few to kind of give you the highlights of it. So the first one is the stick foundation. That's what I have on my skin today. I have it in the shade one. And as I understand it, she's going to be expanding her line come this fall. So definitely keep an eye out. She stuck with just neutral and warmer tones. She didn't do any cool tones for her foundations. So I think she's going to be expanding to cool. I think she's probably going to be throwing in some darker shades, some lighter shades, and really kind of building out the entire range. So I went with one, and I think it's a little bit like a hint too light for my taste, it probably is actually a decent match for my skin tone, but I like a foundation that's a little bit darker. I just think I'm tanner than I am. It's it's actually not good. But anyway, this is what I have on my skin today. I love the texture of this. You'll see in this footage here that I just swiped some stripes on my face. I took my Sonia G Base One brush, I spread it out, and it's like super fast. If you're someone that just wants to get out the door, you don't wanna spend a lot of time on your makeup, this is a wonderful, wonderful foundation. It just spreads really quickly. It has a really nice um, light to medium kind of coverage. I think you can build it up to like a medium, but I wouldn't go beyond that. I would kind of stick to like medium down to light. And I like that. You guys know that I like a light medium coverage. I just think it looks really healthy. It looks really lovely. The finish of this uh, foundation is like a natural, uh, skin-like finish. It's just really, really lovely. The one thing I have noticed though is that I do need to, like I was adding um, like two or three layers of it under my eyes to kind of act as concealer because it is buildable, but I found that when I did that, it looked like it would kind of be breaking up um, after about three or four hours. I don't know if it's like what I had on underneath. Maybe it's like the eye cream that I used just didn't meld well with this foundation. In any case, I kind of stopped doing that and it doesn't do it anywhere else on my face, even around my nose, my mouth, my forehead, all of my other trouble areas were totally fine with this foundation. It was just something about this area. And again, I think maybe it's all the like under eye <laughs> creams and oils maybe that I use um, or just this particular skin. I'm not sure. But anyway, I just sort of stay away from that area now. I'll just sort of keep the foundation over here on my cheek and I'll just swipe up any extras just to blend it out around my eyes. And then I'm gonna go in with a concealer or a brightener anyway, so it's not that big of a deal for me. But that's been my observation with this stick foundation. I also really love the bronzer. It looks incredibly dark in the pan here. And it's just a super creamy formula, but it goes on so beautifully. And if I use a light hand and just sort of lightly dust this all over my face, it works beautifully. It just looks so, so lovely on the skin. It has like this lovely sheen. It's such a creamy texture. It's just, it's really lovely. So I've been loving that bronzer. And I've also been loving this super loaded tinted highlight. It's in the color Peau de Peche. And I think this is the only color that they have. This is actually the only color that they have in the bronzer also, just so you know. Um, but this is what I have actually on my cheeks today. It's called a highlighter, but it really is kind of like a highlighter blush. It's a cream formula and it's just a beautiful, beautiful cheek color. It just gives your cheek this like beautiful sheen. I love that it's like this cream, cream to powder kind of formula. It goes on really nicely. I put it on today over my setting powder 
and it didn't like do anything weird. It didn't mess up my powder underneath. It didn't, the powder didn't interfere with this um, product. It's just lovely. And I just love the sheen. And I think if you, again, are kind of like short on time, this acts as a great blush plus highlight. You just put this all over here and you're done. It's like you're glowing and you've added a little bit of color back into your face. So I really love this product. All right, moving on from Westman Atelier, I wanted to mention, and I mentioned this in my Sephora recommendations, the sale recommendations. This is the NARS Atomic Blonde Palette. I really like this palette. I think it's very very beautiful. It's like a neutral lover's dream, but it is uh, definitely leans towards the warm side and it's not neutral. I feel like when I say neutral, a lot of people automatically think like everyday or boring. This is neither everyday nor is it boring. It has a lot of shimmer and glitter and really fun and interesting eyeshadow formulas. I have the highlighter on today and it's just beautiful. I just love the kind of like soft sheen that it gives your skin. It's definitely not like an in your face, super, super like lit highlight. It's just a really beautiful, like subtle sheen. Uh, let me go ahead and swatch these for you. So this is the highlight and here is the bronzer. And this bronzer is lovely, but I have to use a light hand with it, but it does work out very nicely. And then let me go ahead and swatch these eyeshadows for you. Here are the eyeshadows. This palette is limited edition. However, two of the eyeshadows actually exist in uh, the line. I believe it's these two. Isolde, Isolde 2, and this one is Galapagos. And this one is called Kink and this one is called Icon. So the kink color is one that is, I wanna say, I feel like I saw this in the Wanted palette, the one that kinda had like a pinky tone to it. It has, um, it's almost like kind of chunky, but I feel like the more I worked with the shadow, the better it became. It almost like it needs like the warmth of your finger or it just needs to be worked down. I know when I first swatched it, when I first played around with it, I was not happy with the color payoff. I was not happy with the pigmentation or the performance of the shadow, but like the third, fourth time I got into it, it started to really kind of shine. So I think you just kind of have to get further into the pan for this shade right here, this kink shade, but it's really beautiful. So I love this palette. If these colors speak to you, I think this is kind of a no brainer and definitely get it at Sephora while the sale is still going on. I think it goes on until the third. Yes, the third. Um, I'm not gonna dwell on this, but the Clay de Poe Radiant Corrector for Eyes, it's what I'm wearing today. Absolutely love it. I've talked about this endlessly, so I'll shut up about it now. The Dior Backstage Contour Palette. This has been the standout product in that whole backstage collection. So the foundation didn't really work out for me. Thankfully, I only had a sample, but it was, um, it looked really nice when I first put it on. But as the day went on, I felt like it was more and more drying and it just didn't feel good on my skin. So I never used it again. And it's not really for me either because it has like a very matte finish. So I passed on that. I didn't get a full size, but this contour palette, I've been reaching for a lot. I really like this contour shade. It really works out nicely. It is cooler, as you can tell. It's a cooler shade, but it's not too cool. It's not too gray, where I feel like you have to be really careful with it. And then this highlight powder is great as a brightening kind of powder. That you're not even gonna see. Um, but the formula of these powders are really nice. They're very creamy. Um, they blend really nicely. They pick up easily on my brush. So I've just been reaching for this quite a bit. You can see that <laughs> the Dior imprint is um, pretty much gone on the highlight. It's definitely fading on the contour. But this has been lovely. This is sort of like the big surprise to me. I was not that excited about this, but yeah. I've been reaching for this a lot. All right, next on my list is the Shantakai La Serena Bronzer Highlighter Duo. This was part of their limited edition summer collection, the Positano collection. I think this is still available. If it is, definitely grab it. It is so good. So it has this beautiful picture on the front and here is the bronzer and the highlighter inside. This has such a lovely texture and the powders are just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Isn't that pretty? 
So I have this bronzer kind of dusted lightly all over my face today. This I've used a lot, so I decided to use the NARS Atomic Blonde one, but look at that. Isn't that just pretty? It looks like satin ribbon, doesn't it? I just love this. I will definitely link to this down below if I can find it online. The last time I looked, it was still available. So anyway, fingers crossed that it still is. All right, the eyeshadow palette that I've been reaching for a ton is this Chanel Claire Obscure Quad. And uh, this showed up in my top five neutral eyeshadow palettes video, the one that I do with the Glam Dr. Mona Khan. I talked about this. I've talked about this uh, quite a bit and I just love it. I love it alone. I love it as like an auxiliary palette to ones that maybe don't have the right transition shade or they just don't have like the color that you just wanna kinda lay down on your lid all over. I just reached for this one. It's great on its own. I use these two colors today along with the NARS Atomic Blonde palette and it's just great. It made for like a great matte uh, partner to those NARS uh, eyeshadows which are really kind of like shimmery and glittery and blingy. So this has been wonderful i just love it and the formula is just amazing it is so soft and creamy i think i mentioned and i'll say it again these to me are even creamier than the natasha denona mattes and they're really easy to work with very very blendable and just great everyday shades and i pretty much made fun of myself when i purchased this and kind of went on and on about this because this palette, if you look at it, yes, it's very boring. It's probably the most basic palette in the entire world. But to me, that's like having that black dress in your closet. You just can never have enough, and they're just indispensable. I think they're just indispensable in my makeup collection. So I've been loving this and using this quite a bit. Um, gosh, what else have I been using? Oh, I've been using the Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel. Won't go on about that. I've also been using the Tom Ford Eye Cole Intense in Metallic Mink. A lot. I've talked about this endlessly as well, um, but this has been a great pairing to all of these kind of like warm, warmish, neutral um, eyeshadows that I've been using, like in the NARS Atomic Blonde and the Chanel Claire Obscure. This has been a really lovely uh, partner to those. So I have been trying this trick that I found out about on Wayne Goss's channel. I don't know if he came up with this trick. It's probably one of those um, tricks that all makeup artists know. But if you wanna keep your eyelashes curled, you should use like a waterproof mascara kind of at the base of your lashes, just a coat of it, and then let it kind of like set a little bit and then curl your lashes. There's something about like the waxiness um, in a waterproof mascara that helps keep your lashes curled. So I've been trying that out with this uh, Monsieur Big from Lancome in the waterproof version. And I got this sort of deluxe sample, I think from, maybe from Sephora? Anyway, some retailer that I placed an online order, they had this as an option for a sample. And I thought, oh, let me try that. Let me try that out. And I've been trying it out and I have to say it does work. It definitely works better than you know, curling my lashes with non-waterproof mascara. I don't wanna say that my lashes stay curled all day because they're just way too stubborn for that. But this definitely helps out. I think the trick really, really does help. Now I have tried putting mascara base down because you guys know how much I love my Chanel La Base mascara. Um, I'll put that down, I'll put this on top of it, then I'll curl my lashes. That doesn't work as well as if I just use this. So I don't know, maybe there's something in the La Base mascara that kind of contradicts what's in here. But if I just use this a little bit, uh, let it set, curl my eyelashes, and then put, go in and use like a nice coat of it all over, it really does help curl my eyelashes. So, um, so I've been using this and I've been loving this. This is a really nice mascara, no complaints. Um, and it washes off pretty easily. It doesn't flake, it doesn't smudge all day, but when I use my Kogendo Cleansing Spa Water, it comes right off. So no complaints with this mascara. And then I have a couple of fun lip products to talk about. This is the Pat McGrath, uh, what does she call these? These Lip Fetish Lip Balms. And this is in Bronze Astral. This is actually what I have on my lips today. And I just love this one. This, as you can see, has like a bronze tint to the balm. And then it has these like bronze, uh, like crystally bits in there. Um, but then, there's also like other colors going on in there. It's just super, super duper pretty. It's super dimensional and you can't feel the sparkles. It's not 
you know, gritty at all. It's very, very smoothing. It's, uh, it feels great on the lips. It's very, very moisturizing. So this has definitely been in the rotation this past month. And if I feel like I need a little bit of definition, I've been using my Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude uh, Lip Cheat. This is something that I have definitely talked about a lot, but probably not lately. But this and all of her lip cheats are amazing. So I've been using this, and I've also been using it along with this NARS lip gloss. This is one of the full vinyl lacquers in At First Sight. And I purchased this with Risa Does Makeup. We both had to get this color. It is so much fun. It's great as a lip topper. Look at that shine. It's great as a lip topper and it's also great on its own or with like a lip liner. So I'll line my lips with uh, the Iconic Nude and I'll kind of bring it in towards the center. I'll put this all over my lips and then I'll just, you know, smear my lips together and it just blends the two together really beautifully and this gives you such a high shine, fun, kind of like glittery prismatic lip. It's just beautiful, loving this. And then lately I've been whipping out my Sisley Loose Powder in One Irise. This has such a beautiful sheen. This is a powder that I had to grow to love. When I first used it, it didn't look great, um, but I really had to learn how to use this. And I used my Sonia G uh, Face One brush with it it works beautifully. And when I've learned about this powder and how I like it on my skin, I basically just have to stay away from my nose area. If I focus it just on my cheeks and I buff out all of my cheek products with it, kind of bring it over to my chin and stay around my forehead, basically like the perimeter of my face, it works beautifully. It is so gorgeous. It has a little bit of sparkle, so it gives your skin just a little bit of that like glow from within. And it's just lovely, but it has taken me a little bit to come to love it. When I first used it, I thought it was very cakey, but I wasn't really like working it into the skin. I was just sort of like dusting it over my face and it ended up looking, for my skin type, it ended up looking very, very dry and cakey. Um, and then I started kind of using it all over, trying to buff it in. It did not look good around this area. Like I just mentioned, it was looking really cakey. So now that I know where to use it and now that I know to use this brush and really buff it in, it looks, I think it looks gorgeous. <laughs> I look gorgeous. I think it looks really nice on the skin. So I've been loving this powder. All right, I think that's it. There were definitely some other products that I was playing around with and really liking this past month, but these were the items that kind of rose to the top. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what some of your favorites have been for this past month down below in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and definitely subscribe before you leave. I would love that. And I'll see you in my next video.